It feels like iPad OS 18.1 has been in beta forever, but as of today, it is finally available for general release. Depending on the iPad you have, this could be a big update or a pretty modest one. If you have a compatible iPad, this is the release that gives you access to the first set of Apple Intelligence features on iPad. As a reminder, you need an M-series iPad, so that's an M1, M2, or M4, iPad Air or Pro, or the recently released A17 Pro iPad Mini to get access to Apple Intelligence. So let's go ahead and start with those new Apple Intelligence features. So what's good to know up front is that since Apple Intelligence is launching in beta, you do have to go and turn it on in settings. It's not on by default. So if you go into settings and you go into Apple Intelligence and Siri, you should have the option here to opt in to Apple Intelligence. Now, there may be a wait list here, so you may not get access right away, and it's unknown how long the wait list will be once this goes live. It was pretty short during the beta, but uh, as we've seen with 18.2, these wait lists can stretch on for days and weeks. Writing tools are a collection of AI-powered capabilities that are centered around text. Now I'm gonna demo these in notes, but they should be available across the system anywhere you can enter or select text. I kind of categorize these into two different groups of tools. There are the tools that are centered around rewriting and the tools that are centered around summarization. So starting from kind of the top of the list here, we're gonna start with proofread. So I've got this sentence here. I've highlighted the error in purple. And so what I'm gonna do is triple tap to select the sentence. And you'll see in the context menu, there's a new option that says writing tools. I'm gonna to tap that and I get the writing tools popover. Now, I'm gonna select proofread. And you'll see here in just a second or two, the system identified the mistyped word and corrected it to what it thought was the correct word, which was right in this case. If you focus your attention down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see we have this floating toolbar with some options related to the writing tools. So I can easily revert that change if I don't wanna do it. I can give feedback on this change because remember, Apple Intelligence is launching in beta, so it's not gonna be perfect, but you'll notice that the system just made that change without showing me what it was gonna do beforehand. So at the bottom here, it tells me it made one change. Now in this case, it was really obvious, but if you had a lot of text, you might have no idea what, if anything, the system just did. Their solution to this has, is to let you kind of page through the changes it made and revert them one by one if you want. It's a little easier to see on the second sentence, which has two errors. So again, I'm going to triple tap to highlight. I'm gonna tap proofread. Again, you can see the system made the right corrections. And it says I have two changes at the bottom here and I can tap these arrows and it tells me what change it made and gives me the option to use the original if I wish. Do that again for this one. Next, let's talk about rewriting. Now there is this kind of general rewrite option in writing tools. We go to this sentence here. I'm just gonna say rewrite, and that's fine. I probably wouldn't go with this, but, so this is the general rewrite. I'm gonna revert this, because what's more interesting is you have the option to rewrite your text with different tones. You have the option for more friendly tone, You can see this one is definitely less cold and robotic sounding. We could do professional. This is already kind of professional, but thank you for your attention to this matter. Makes this even more professional, I guess. And we have concise, which in this case took off the end of the sentence. So I've been triple tapping and using the context menu to invoke the writing tools option here but you can also access writing tools from the toolbar at the top. You see we have a new option here for writing tools. You tap that and you get the same set of options. Next, let's look at our summarization options. So for this one, I'm not gonna highlight my text because I wanna summarize this entire document. So I'm just gonna go up here to the toolbar, tap on the writing tools button, and I'm gonna try the summary option. You see, 
the AI has gone through the text, analyzed it, tried to understand the context, and provided this short summary, which, if you've seen this episode of Seinfeld, is pretty accurate. So let's look at key points. So taking a little bit longer. All right, and this has tried to distill down my document into what the AI thinks are the key points of this document. I'll let you make the judgment on that. And then these last two, I haven't found a ton of use for yet. There's an option to summarize your document in a list format. Or you can summarize your document in a table. I think there are probably uses for these two options. I just haven't figured them out yet, or they don't apply to anything I do. If you by chance get into this and figure out good use cases for these options, please comment and let me know. I'd love to figure this out. Notifications on iOS and iPadOS have long been an area of complaint. Actually, pretty much since the beginning, where the iPhone only had modal notifications that they disappeared forever when you dismissed them. So with Apple Intelligence, Apple's making some strides here to improve the notification experience. First, what we have are notification summaries, and these are exactly what they sound like. So when you get multiple notifications from an app, the system will try to analyze the content of those messages and deliver a single summary so at a glance you're able to see what a long message thread might be about. So if I come down here, so I have an example here. I've got three texts that I sent myself inviting myself to a movie. I did go see this by myself, by the way. Great movie. And you can see here it summarizes three messages into movie invitation to see Deadpool and Wolverine in eight. If I tap that, the messages expand, I can see the contents, and you'll see for this kind of simple conversation, this was a relatively accurate summary. Now this should work out of the box. Apps don't need to opt into this behavior. This is again a system behavior, so this should work across pretty much any app that sends notifications. Another improvement in this area are the idea of priority notifications and reducing interruptions. Reduce interruptions is actually a new focus mode that's added automatically when you update to iPadOS 18.1. The idea behind this focus mode is the system will try to determine based on the content of the message, based on who sent the message, based on how you in interact with that person in the app, a number of different cues to determine when a message is important and has to be delivered right away, or when it can wait and be delivered later when you're no longer in that focus mode. A great example of this is again, if you look at this message, You'll see here it says maybe important because you know it's not sure. Based on the context, this message has an action that needs a quick response, and so it's been flagged as maybe important. You can see here how important notifications are surfaced while others would not be delivered right away. Now, the great thing about reduced interruptions is that it's not just a focus mode, it's also an option across your existing focus modes. If I go into my do not disturb, You'll see here at the top, Intelligent Breakthrough and Silencing essentially does the same thing. It allows important notifications to interrupt you and silence those that are determined to not be important. So you don't have to specifically turn on this focus mode. You can just enable this in the focus modes you already use, and you'll get the same effect. iPadOS 18.1 brings some updates for everyone's favorite virtual assistant. Now, this is not the big upgrade that we've been waiting for, where it'll understand your personal context and be able to do more in your apps. That is likely coming in iPadOS 18.4 later in 2025. But we have some improvements here nonetheless. So first, there is a new interface. So if you either use the wake word or hold the power button, you'll see the new interface glows around the side of the display. It's almost like they took the old Siri orb and smushed it with the screen and it's kind of peeking out around the side. Nice to freshen things up every so often. My favorite new feature around Siri would be the new interface for type to Siri. So you could do this before, but this option lives in accessibility. But the idea is that there are some times where you don't want to speak to your assistant. 
if you double tap the bottom of the display or the home bar, you get this new interface that brings up the keyboard and then you can ask questions here. Uh, like what time is it in Hawaii? Hit the button here and I get the response. And you can ask other things here too, of course, but because this is iPad OS, we also have the Apple Pencil, which means we can use that to interact with Siri here as well, what Apple's calling Scribble to Siri. So for example, uh, let's do, remind me to call mom today. And there we go. It's been added to my reminders, and I can keep going with what I'm doing. Another new capability is, is that it now knows more about Apple products, which is, I guess, useful in some way, shape, or form. So let's try this out. What kind of charger can I use for my iPad? Okay, that's vaguely helpful, I guess. Let's try something else. Which Apple Pencils are compatible with the M4 iPad Pro? Which Apple Pencils are compatible with my iPad? Okay, so this isn't perfect, and you apparently need to word your questions in a particular way, but you kind of get the idea of how this is supposed to work. I honestly don't see how this is faster than using Google. Maybe if you find the right query, this will work better for you. So Siri does get a little smarter in terms of remembering context of your conversation and being able to suss out what you really mean if you stumble over your words. For example, if I were to say, what's the weather in London, I mean in Egypt right now? You see it skipped out on the London part and figured out I meant Egypt and gave me the weather for Cairo. Now if I were to say, What's the weather in Egypt? What about on Tuesday? What about next Thursday? Okay, fair enough. So you see, I didn't have to keep saying, what's the weather in Egypt on this day? I was able to just continue with what I wanted and Siri remembered that we were talking about Egypt and presented the weather on the day I requested. So again, not the personal context update that I'm personally waiting for for Siri, but still some nice improvements to make Siri a little more usable and less frustrating for those of you who have problems using it. The Photos app gets some improvements as well. Chief among them is a new feature called Cleanup. Now, this is basically Apple's implementation of a feature Google Photos and other photo apps have had for a while called Magic Eraser. It lets you use AI to remove unwanted elements out of your existing photos. So let's see what this would look like. So I've got this random photo here, and I want to remove that guy in the background. He looks suspicious. So what I'm going to do here is tap on the cleanup button. So on this iPad, I haven't used this before yet. So you can see here it's downloading what I can only assume are the specific models used to power cleanup. And it takes a couple seconds here to get everything ready. And now we're all set. So what I'm gonna do here is just basically swipe over the element I want to remove. Do this as thoroughly as I can here. I don't know if you need to be this thorough. Get this nice effect. And the person is removed. Now it did a pretty good job, but you can see around the kid's arm, there's still a little bit of the person there. And I could probably go in and try to correct that, but for my purposes, I'm gonna call this good enough to give you an idea of how this feature works. Apple Intelligence adds smart replies to both messages and mail. So what happens here is Apple Intelligence will analyze the contents of your messages on device, try to determine if a question is being asked, and then present you with some hopefully intelligent responses as to what you might wanna reply with. You can see that in action here. If I go into messages, 
and you'll see I have this last message asking if I can pick up the kids today at 2.30. And the uh, two replies that are presented in the bar above the keyboard are, yes, I can, and sorry, I can't make it. How do you know that this is an Apple intelligence thing? Well, if you caught it, when I open the app, you'll see across those responses, we get the Apple intelligence glow, which is kind of how you know this is an Apple intelligence thing. I point that out because these type of replies have been in iPad OS for a while. So honestly, I'm not sure if this is actually new or if it's something that Apple is just kind of adding under the Apple intelligence banner. Notes gains the ability to show intelligently generated transcriptions of your audio notes. So if you've been taking advantage of the ability to record audio in the notes app, you'll now be presented with a summarized transcription of what the content of the audio is. Which you can see here worked decently enough for this small amount of text I just said. I can imagine this being much more useful if you're in a lecture situation or recording a meeting at work. Control Center received a big revamp in iPadOS 18, and 18.1 adds a couple of small refinements that are sorely needed. First, if you are familiar with the connectivity platter that has your airplane mode, Wi-Fi, and cellular options, you can now add those controls individually to your Control Center layout. So say, for example, I just want Bluetooth here. I just have to go into the Add panel, slide down to Connectivity, tap Bluetooth, and now it's added to my Control Center layout. Adds a little more customization to the whole layout. Next, if you want to reset your Control Center layout for whatever reason, you just can just go into Settings now under Control Center, and there's now a Reset Control Center option. And what that will do is reset your Control Center layout to the default, so you're able to start over if you want. So it's an easy way to start over if you want to go with a completely different control center layout. Just tap that button, confirm it, and the control center layout is back at the default. So that's going to do it for what's new in iPadOS 18.1. I am really looking forward to 18.2 and getting to play with all of the image generation stuff. As always, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much and I appreciate you. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. You can follow me on social media at SlatePad. I'm on Threads, Mastodon, and Instagram. And with that, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.